Lord forgive me for this trap shit Sergeant Smack make it backflip Telly Hank it with the action With the vital speaking Spanish Frank Matthews how I vanish Poof Came back like I'm King Tut Gold BBS is on a beamer When Fat Cat was tearing queens up Fall off the prop and not the re -up. Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus Uptown like I'm Baby Mane Just caught a touchdown From the Bay And heroin addiction and this got Nixon's attention very quickly. We must wage what I have called total war against public enemy number one in the United States. The it's North Carolina mob state. is run by men who know a lot about the military. Ten of the top men in this organization are former sergeants in the Army or the Air Force. Federal authorities identify this man as the head of the North Carolina mob, Leslie Ike Atkinson. There is no doubt in my mind, I know exactly how it got started. And I know the person that started it. I know how, I know, uh, I also know uh, who involved the DEA in this and the Customs Service. And that person was Frank Lucas. And how it came about was, I have this guy, the, the Leon Ellis, in Bangkok to do this furniture for me because I don't want to hire no ties to do it. While Frank was visiting me, with me, I took him to Thailand for five days. While he was doing that, he came, and he saw Leon Ellis out in the backyard, and before I could get downstairs good, he's out there talking to Leon Ellis. And when he asked Leon, what in the world are you doing in Thailand? I busted in and said that he's making coffee. That's where Frank Lucas decided in his mind that we was bringing drugs in the coffee. He ain't bought no drugs no damn well. He, I fed him a story about Leon and now he's trying to capitalize on it. I had him using my company car. He can't go nowhere without him. I put him to sleep. I wake him up. I put him on the plane. I have him get his passport. I pay for him. Tell you, I paid for his visa. Man, I was going to give him no visa. He had the record of one. That's why I told his wife, Shorty, and I don't remember Shorty and Wade, my aunt, but they, uncle, my nephew, they were there. I told them to wait. Out here, I take Frank in first. I paid a hundred dollars to the Times to give him a, a visa because he, of, of what his record was at the time. Two Italians stepped out of the out of the thing. And they looking at me funny. I'm looking at them funny. <laughs> what the hell's going on? So I just kept right on walking, picked the pace up towards my office, and got behind uh, the, the, the glass. And one of them asked me just before I go in, he said, are you all right? I said, yeah. He said, well, the, my, my name is such a very nice, very nice guy. But I didn't mean it was. It didn't look very nice, but... The, and the other introduced himself and everything. They said, "Which talk to you? I said, yeah, uh, come on in my place in here. I got my friends in here too. I'm in here behind the glass. Uh, everybody can see me, everything happens. You can't come up here and do nothing. Let's just sing. And so we get in to talk. And they come in, huddle around and everything. They say, oh, you know, uh, Frank, uh, Frank. I said, yeah, well, Frank. 
this is who was that? He said, uh, Frank owes us 50 grand. And he said, for us to get it from you, uh, you would give it to us. We come out of an era of severe racial strife, which involved the burning down of cities. We were in the midst of a terrible, controversial war that was ripping the country to pieces. I think that one of the significant points about the Vietnam War and drugs is that there were two fronts in that war. There was, the, there was drug use on the home front, but there was a lot of drug use in Vietnam itself. Drugs were a gift to a lot of these soldiers that were knee-deep in horror every day and saw the most repugnant things you could possibly imagine. Get really stoned. Then, you know, who like who cares about the war? <laughs> you think that we were using drugs on the home front, what was going on in Vietnam was the U.S. military was using even harder drugs. They were shooting up heroin. Yo, yo, we back. The shades pop a lot. Mob, we on our way to NC with it. Goldsboro. But this ain't that petty small shit y'all used to. We headed international with this. Boy, we got major moves in Thailand. Now, the person that we are going to be covering today is going to be none other than Leslie Ike Atkinson, but the media would go on to coin him what I would say is one of the best nicknames in street history, Sergeant Smack. Now, in today's climate and the introduction of shit like fentanyl in the drug game, I would probably say that heroin use is probably at an all-time high. I did read somewhere very recently where this year was the first year that the United States has surpassed more than 100,000 overdose deaths. And I'm not quite sure how many of those are attributed to fentanyl and how many of those are attributed to heroin. But those numbers are very, very disparaging. And me, somebody that considers their self a historian of the streets, and the impact of the drug game on the streets, I could distinctively remember a time right around the mid 80s to early 90s when it seemed like heroin use was on a decline. And that would be when drugs like cocaine and crack cocaine would begin to emerge and be the drug most used by Americans, but before this time period that we're living in, and I want to say about the 70s or so, but heroin was the drug that I would have to say that affected the black community the most at that time. And it would go on to be portrayed in several movies. Dead Presidents is the main one that comes to mind. It was the time of guys like Nicky Barnes and just like in the movie Dead Presidents, as the use of the drug heroin increased at home, it also increased with the soldiers that was stationed in Vietnam fighting the war. And one of those soldiers fighting the war and one of those soldiers fighting Ike Atkinson, who would achieve the rank of Master Sergeant while he served in the U.S. military. But according to the U.S. government, while Ike Atkinson was fighting for our country, he would go on to be one of the major players smuggling H into the United States from Southeast Asia from 1968 to 1975. Now, Ike Atkinson, before he became the prolific drug trafficker he is known to be now, he was involved in gambling heavy. He was known as a card shark or a scam artist. And they talk a lot about that in his early life in his book, Sergeant Smack, The Legendary Lives and Times of Ike Atkinson, Kingpin and His Band of Brothers that was released in 2010. Now, during his run from 1968 to 1975, according to law enforcement officials, a thousand pounds would be the conservative estimate of the amount of heroin that Ike's rank was responsible for trafficking from Bangkok and Thailand, with some people saying that that amount translates to about $400 million worth of illegal drug sales. 
Now, Ike Atkinson's criminal activities would go on to spark the creation of the special DEA unit named Syntec 9, which would go on to conduct a three-year investigation across three continents. Now, Ike, who was very elusive in his time in the drug game, would face major issues in 1975 when a shipment of heroin that was due to arrive at two addresses in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Now, according to different sources, the addresses belong to two elderly black women. Now, according to authorities in the scheme masterminded by Ike, army servicemen would arrive at those addresses to pick up the shipments, saying that they had accidentally been mailed to the wrong addresses. Now, the scheme, which had worked before, had hit a hitch in the road with one of the women contacting postal authorities and the other fearing that she had been mailed a bomb contacting the police. The police would go on to seize the packages and after seeing its contents and processing it, they would find Ike Atkinson's palm prints on one of the heroin bags and he would go on to be arrested at his house in Goldsboro on January 19th, 1975. Now, after being convicted the very next year and serving his time in Otisville, he would again be charged in 1987 along with six other inmates and a correction officer following a 15-month investigation where an undercover agent posing as a corrupt German diplomat bought five pounds of heroin on Ike Atkinson's behalf in Thailand. After it was all said and done, he would end up serving 31 years in prison and being released in 2007. Now, if anybody remembers 2007, one of the biggest movies that year was a movie supposedly based on the life of Frank Lucas titled American Gangster. Now, in this movie, American Gangster, there was a character by the name of Nate who was portrayed as Frank Lucas's cousin and it was stationed in the war it's very widely speculated that that character was based on Ike Atkinson. And after his release from jail, Ike Atkinson would go on to refute a lot of the claims that Frank Lucas had made, along with a lot that was portrayed in the movie, saying that he did not use the coffins of dead GIs, going on to say that they would smuggle the heroin using furniture, and after claims would come out of Frank Lucas cooperating with the federal government, that would lead a lot of people to say that Sergeant Smack was the true American gangster. Sadly, he would go on to pass away seven years after he was released from federal prison in November of 2014 at the age of 88. Now, I definitely want to know what y'all think as far as top nicknames. I got Sergeant Smack, I got Convertible Burt, I got Maserati Rick. Who y'all got? Y'all flood the comment box for me. Y'all make sure y'all follow me on Instagram, on Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. Y'all make sure y'all hit the red subscribe button right under this video so y'all know when this real trill spill is dropping. And we be back before you know it. Shit got pop a lot. Mob gang.